Well, good evening, good evening to all pro wrestling fans from all around the world of all shapes and sizes. Welcome to another pro wrestling talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. So, two main things I wanted to talk about. Number one, I want to start out with a couple of uh, WrestleMania weekend updates from yours truly as far as my trip is concerned. And then we're going to jump right into my review of Ice Ribbon's March 2024 show that happened just this past weekend. And of course, as you can see, I am dressed for the occasion. Figured, why not? You know what I mean? <clears throat> But first, I got some good news. I got some really, really good news. So, those that have seen my previous video know that I'm going to Philadelphia, WrestleMania weekend. And I was originally only going to seven shows. But... Thank the Lord, I was able to extend my trip, and now instead of seven shows, I am going to ten shows. That's right, ten shows, ladies and gentlemen. So, I'm going to go through and name each of them in order. So, I was able to get my trip extended. To, from Saturday to Monday. So this was what made it possible for me to attend all 10 of these shows. And I know what some of y'all may be thinking, that's a lot of shows in a span of a couple of days, but with the way that they're split up, makes it doable. Makes it very doable. So let me run down the list in its entirety once again. So Thursday, April 4th, I'll be attending Defy Wrestling, uh, which is which the official title of the show is Defy Can't Deny It. That's the official title for the show. That's at 11 a.m., so I'll be going to that. Of course, Stardom, American Dream 2024. That is at... Uh, the doors open at 2 p.m., but I believe the show starts at 3 p.m. So the show is at 3 p.m. Uh, oh, and Defy Wrestling, that'll be at uh, Penn's Landing. Stardom, American Dream 2024 at the 2300 Arena. Uh, DDT in Philadelphia, that's at 8 p.m. I'll be going to that, back to Penn's Landing. JCW, or excuse me, GCW, JCW versus the world, uh, pretty much at midnight, same venue, Penn's Landing. So that is where the first four shows I'll be attending, all on Thursday. So that's four. Friday, April 5th, Friday we'll be attending TJPW Live in Philly, that's at 11. Penn's Landing. Then Progress Wrestling, which the title for that show is called Freedom Walks Again. That's at three. I'm also one of the new shows that I just added. ROH Supercard of Honor. That's right. ROH Supercard of Honor, which will be at the uh, Liat the Liat I always get this one messed up. Let me see if I can pronounce this one. I always get this one messed up. It is at the Leacorus Center. The Leacorus Center. Um, so different uh, venue. Uh, that's at seven. Okay. And then uh, for the culture, which is part of the collective, that's at midnight. So those are the four shows Friday. Going to one show on Saturday, Saturday the uh, 6th, 
which is the GCW versus TJPW show, which that's back at Penn's Landing, and that will be at uh, 2.30, 2.30 p.m. And then the last show will actually be on Sunday, April 7th, and that is the Spark Joshi Trailblaze 2024 show. That's right, one of the new shows that I picked up on. <coughs> Excuse me. And that'll be at the Monster Factory. Um, and uh, technically it's in Palsboro, New Jersey, but because New Jersey and, and uh, Pennsylvania, because the two areas are pretty much dead close to each other, easy access, apparently. But... Yeah, those are your 10 shows that I will be attending. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? Um, I did also get a WrestleCon ticket, mainly for the sake of the uh, meet and greets, certain meet and greets. So, some way, somehow, I'll fit that in. But, yeah, a lot of pro wrestling. A lot to see, a lot to do, a lot to experience. Um, it would have been nice to attend WrestleMania, but WrestleMania is like extremely expensive. So yeah, no WrestleMania. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Can't do it. Can't do it. Won't do it. Too expensive. But anyway... But yeah, those are the 10 shows I'm attending. And yeah, looking forward to all 10 of them. I just hope I get plenty of rest. Which, there are time gaps, so I should be able to manage. Anyway, before I move on to my review of Ice Ribbon March 2024, here's a quick word on the sponsor of this video, Game Beauty. Check them out. As you continue to enjoy content here at Blitzball Champ Gaming, be sure you take a moment to check out Game Beauty. Beauty inspired by gaming. Game Beauty brings to you video game related makeup and cosmetic products. You have products such as eyeshadow palettes, Elemental Pearl Highlighters, Eyeshadow Brushes, Liquid Eyeliner Pens by Akideris, and even non-makeup products like Graphic Tees. They even have special collaboration makeup kits such as this Persona 5 Heat Wave Brush Single, Metaverse Bundle, and even a Phantom Thieves Limited Edition Makeup Collection. Also remember that Game Beauty provides international shipping of $60 or more. And if you use the promo code BLITZBALLCHAMP, all in caps, you can get 10% off of your order. So be sure to use that to your advantage. Now, back to your regularly scheduled video. Enjoy, and thank you. Alrighty, Ice Ribbon March 2024 took place this past Saturday, March 23rd, at Corquin Hall. We had ourselves six matches total, and three of them, yeah, actually three of them were championship matches. And you know what? This is really my first time seeing three titles defended on an Ice Ribbon show. Yeah, I was actually very pleased. 
And overall, this was a solid show. This was a very solid show. But let's go ahead and get started with our first three non-title matches first. Alrighty? Alright, let's see how they opened up the show with this one. Alrighty. First match to open up Ice Road in March 2024 was a tag team match. We had the team of Arisa Shinose and Yuko Sakurai taking on the team of Yuri and Seron. A good match to open up the show. Uh, I like Yuko Sakurai. I definitely like Yuri. Yuri, former Ice Cross Infinity Champion uh, from Gambare. Of course, Yuko Sakurai from Colors. But yeah, this was a... This was a good, solid match. Of course, Seron and Arisa Shinose, both part of the Ice Ribbon roster. <coughs> but overall, this was a nice back-and-forth match. I felt, I felt like it was pretty even, like as far as the teams. But solid match between uh, all four ladies. Um, Seron picked up the victory for her team after landing a diving double foot stomp on Arisa Shinose and then covering her for the 1-2-3. Yuri and Seron pick up the victory in the opening match. A uh, pretty good match overall. I enjoyed it. Alrighty. Let's go to our next match. Our next match, we had ourselves a singles match. Check it out. We had Ancham versus Yappy. This was definitely quite an interesting match, and you know, it was definitely, definitely entertaining. Uh, Yappy, uh, somebody that I've definitely kept an eye on, especially throughout Ice Ribbon. Um, and Ancham, Ancham, I've kind of seen her here, seen her at Skibon. You know, she's she's definitely become more of a familiar face to me now. I, I will definitely say that. But uh, a strong showing for both ladies. Very action-packed. And, you know, Yappy definitely took advantage uh, using her size overall. But, you know, you, you got to see some good uh, striking from Ancham as well. But this was good back-and-forth match. But... Ancham was able to use her quickness and agility to reverse a choke slam attempt from Yappy into a small package pin for the 1 2 3. And Ancham defeats Yappy with that reversal small package. Very crafty. Very crafty. But overall, pretty entertaining match. All right. And then our last non-title match of the of the card came down to a trios match. Team number one, we had Yu Hanaya, Nane Furukawa, and Yoshiko Hasegawa taking on the trio of Asuka Fujitaki, Yuki Minami, and Mayuka Koiki. This was quite uh this was quite an interesting match. Um I like the pose down uh between uh Yuki and Yoshiko, which kind of made Yoshiko kind of sad because Yuki Minami was just too much for her in that pose down. But this was a pretty action packed and entertaining match. Um I know last time I saw Nane Furukawa, she definitely continued to show more of her submission skills. Um, Asuka Fujitaki, which, like I said, was in the, the finals of the Ribbon 1 tournament before, you know, she lost to Habuko Hoshi. So, Asuka Fujitaki, definitely somebody that's been doing well. Um, and Yoshiko Hasegawa, of course, part of, uh, the Gambare roster. But, uh, you got six very talented ladies in this match. And I definitely, uh, enjoyed what I saw. 
Um, gotta give a shout out to Nene Furukawa. Uh, this is really like the second or third time I've seen her pick up a victory, whether it's in a tag match, trios match, like she's really starting to become more of a beast with her submission game. I've been like seeing it more and more. And this was no different as she actually got Asuka Fujitaki trapped in a double arm bar submission with a you know using her legs and yeah made her uh made her submit therefore giving Nene Furukawa, Yoshiko Hasegawa, and Yu Hanaya the victory. And I have to say, Nene Furukawa, I really like her theme. Her theme music was really cool, very catchy. Very catchy. But she picked up the win for her team and another submission victory for Nene Furukawa. Somebody to keep an eye on, that's for sure. Okay. Y'all ready for some title matches? Let's let's get into some title matches. Alright, first one. And this is a very unique championship match. So this is uh, for the Triangle Ribbon Championship, which is mainly defended in triple threat matches, in three-way matches. So you technically had the title vacant at this moment, although Yuki Mashiro did come out with the title on because she felt like even though she had retired, or quote-unquote retired, uh felt like when she came back that she would be reinstated as champion, but technically not. Anyway, Triangle Ribbon Championship on the line. Makoto versus Yuki Mashiro versus Kaho Matsushita. Uh, definitely like all three of these ladies. I felt like these were the right picks for this title match. And the crazy thing about it is even if somebody was holding the title or not, if this ended in a time limit draw, then it, the title is vacated by default. Isn't that crazy? <coughs> if it ever results in a time limit draw, title is vacated by default. It's crazy. Thankfully... That did not happen in this match. Just, that did not happen in this match. But, this was a very action-packed match between all three of these ladies. And like I said, all three of these ladies, great choices for this title match. Uh, definitely was good to see Makoto again and Kaho Matsushita. But, uh, this is only like maybe my second or third time seeing Yuki Mashiro. Because when I first started watching Ice Ribbon, she had that, that last match, and then I didn't see her again for a long while until just recently. But this was a very great match. Uh, with how it was going, it was really anybody's game. Uh, would have been nice if Makoto won. I miss seeing her with a title, title belt. But to be honest, I wasn't surprised with the finish. But uh, Yuki Mashiro got the pin on Kaho Matsushita with kind of a variation of a Lamaji Straw roll, roll up, kind of sort of speak. But she was able to roll her up for the 1 2 3, and Yuki Mashiro came in with the title, walks out with the title officially, is your new Triangle Ribbon champion. So, congratulations to her. The belt is right back on her officially. But overall, awesome match. Had no complaints. All right. Let's go to our next title match. All righty. We have the International Ribbon Tag Team Championships on the line. As the champs, Mifu Ashita and Kuri took on the Brute Force of Yuta Manase and Totoro Satsuki. Well, definitely felt like David versus Goliath tag team style because you definitely, I mean, I don't think I have to point out the obvious size difference. 
in both teams. But the champs really did did what they could do, and you know, you got to give them credit. They really took it to Totoro and Yuta as best as they could. You know, they didn't back down, and they just they went at them. And you know what? This was this title match went the distance, and even Curie for a while, was able to get Yuna Manase's arms tied up around the uh, one of the turnbuckle posts on the, uh, outside the ring, which helped out for a little while. But she was able to eventually break three and just continue forth. But honestly... The champs hug in there the best they could. Uh and they they are a great tag team. They got a, they got great chemistry. I will say that. Mifu Ashida and Curie have great chemistry together. But just the strength, brute force, and just the annihilation at the hands of Yuta Manase and Totoro Satsuki were just too much for the champs. And Totoro was able to pin Curie after hitting her with kind of a variation of the one-winged angel, which if I remember correctly was the same type of move that she hit, uh, I want to say it was the same move that she hit, uh, Sari Otto when she won the title, when she beat her for the title uh, for the Ice Cross Infinity Championship. But, man, that was, that was a good long while ago. But, Totoro pins Curie, and we have new International Rib Ribbon Tag Team Champions, Yuta Manase, Totoro Satsuki. So, congratulations to them. And, you know, Totoro, another Ice Ribbon Championship on her resume, because, you know, she's a former Ice Cross Infinity Champion, so, hey, good stuff, and, you know, it didn't seem like it was that long that Yuna Manase even returned to the ring, so, that was really good to see, and now she's got some tag team gold, so, Yuna Manase, Totoro Satsuki, I got a feeling they're going to be a really strong tag team, and, yeah, I can't wait to see what kind of run they have, but congratulations to them. Then the main event, the main event of Ice Ribbon March 2024 was a very special one and was the best match of the entire card. Here you go. I have never seen anything like this before until now, and it was totally worth purchasing. We had a mother-daughter showdown in the main event for the Ice Cross Infinity Champion, the top title in Ice Ribbon Joshi Wrestling. Your champion, Ibuki Hoshi, defends against her mother and winner of the Ice Ribbon Ribbon One Tournament, Habuko Hoshi, which was how she earned this title shot in the first place. Oh yeah, mother versus daughter. Daughter as the champion, mother as the challenger. And this match delivered, not just on comedy, but just overall action, really told a good story. There was a good amount of buildup, even just outside of the ring, and just with the different videos that they've done on many different little mini games between mother and daughter. So I really enjoyed the build-up to this. And this match delivered and was very worthy of being the main event. And both ladies did not hold back on each other. I mean, the strikes were there, a lot of pen attempts. I mean, just really going at each other. And they did not hold back. No hesitation. And that's what you love to see. Even in a mother-daughter situation, they did not hold back. 
Abuko's chest was lit up. And I tell you, I, I would love to see this match uh, again. I would not mind if they ran this back at some point. But this match delivered in a big way. And it really came down to the wire. Like I said, they traded pinfall attempts like crazy in this match. But when it was all said and done, daughter Abuki Hoshi was able to pull out the win with one final modified Lamaji straw to pin her mom. Abuko Hoshi for the 1 2 3 to retain the Ice Cross Infinity Championship. So, daughter beats mother. What an excellent main event between these two ladies. And kudos to Habuko Hoshi for uh, you know, putting the belt around her daughter's waist. Great shot sign of respect. Although it was kind of weird seeing <laughs> at the end Ibuki Hoshi plant plant a kiss on her mom on the lips. I was just like, dang. Oh, she loves her mom. But just a great uh, match between both of these ladies. And they definitely, they did awesome. And... Like I said, I'll reiterate, what I really love about Ice Ribbon shows is at the end, they take time, the wrestlers, everybody that competed, they take time to go into the crowd to shake everybody's hands to show their appreciations. I really like that they do that. I wish more promotions did that, but that's one thing I admire Ice Ribbon for doing, just showing their appreciation after every show, going over and shake the hands of the fans. I love that. I really love that. But another great ice ribbon show in the books. And like I said, that was my first time seeing, like, seeing three championship matches. And that was, that was awesome. You know, especially the triangle ribbon championship, one I don't usually see get defended. But it was definitely worth it. Great overall show with an awesome mother versus daughter main event. Love it, love it, love it. Well, that will do it for this video. Don't forget to check out Game Beauty when y'all have some time. Happy shopping. And let me know what y'all thought about Ice Ribbon March 2024. What did you think of the card? What did you think of the matches? Uh, like I said, we came out of this with one set of new champions, which Totoro Satsuki, Yuna Manase, won the International Ribbon tag team champions championships but let me know what y'all's thoughts are on those and don't forget to like comment subscribe and hit that notification bell while you're at it thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed the video for another pro wrestling talk brought to you by blitzball champ gaming here on the u to the tube my name is blitzball champ jason ingram hope everybody has a blessed week and i will see y'all in the next video in our live stream peace Later.